get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Wise here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, like the founders of P90X, Tony Horton. Um, you know, David, what's interesting is he talked about, yes, he's sold hundreds of millions of dollars of P90X, but what he talked about was he used to make money as a street mime. So he would put his hat on the street and the money he made would pay for his apartment and his food. And that's initially how he made money to live. Um, baby Einstein founder, Julie Clark, grew her company in a short time to $20 million um, and sold to Disney. But the impressive part was she beat cancer twice. She calls herself the cancer assassin. And Atari founder, Nolan Bushnell, talked about when he was Steve Jobs' mentor, Steve offered Nolan 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. And there's many more stories. Um, so check out inspiredinsider.com for more episodes. Um, the sponsor in episode uh, is brought to you today by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And our mission is to connect you with your best referral partners and clients. And we do that through our Done For You podcast solution, which is like a Swiss army knife for your business. So it serves as a vehicle for strategic partnerships, referral marketing, content marketing. I even met my business partner and some of my best friends. David Long and I are in a group together with Brian Kurtz, and I met Brian Kurtz through interviewing my podcast, and we became really good friends through it. So I believe if you have a business, you should have a podcast, period. The same thing, David believes if you have a business, you should have a book club, period, period. for your staff. Um, <laughs> podcasting is much more personal for me, though, because it's not just about your business. It's about leaving a legacy for yourself and for your guests. And it was inspired by my grandfather, who was a Holocaust survivor. And him and his brother were concentration camps in Nazi Germany. They were only people to survive of their family. But his legacy lives on because an interview was done by the Holocaust Foundation with him. And I can continue to watch it every year. It's on my about page. And it really inspires me. And so yes, podcasting will help your business, but it helps you and your guests leave a legacy of knowledge behind. Um, so if you have questions about podcasts, you want to start a podcast, which I sh think you should if you're a business, but if you just have questions, you can email support at rise25media.com. We do it all. So you show up and talk. We take that and put it everywhere on the web pretty much. So, and I want to introduce my guest today. This has been long, a long time awaited. We have David Long, founder and CEO of My Employees. It's a 30 plus year a uh, firm in the top 1% worldwide in the employee engagement recognition industry. His firm specializes in helping managers build stronger relationships with their team. Some of their current and past clients, you definitely have heard of. FedEx, Walmart, McDonald's, Lowe's. I could, the list goes on and on. Um, and David believes what Zig Ziglar said was required to become truly successful. And Dave and I both were talking. We both listened to his audio cassette tapes in the car over and over. And he said, yeah. you can have anything you want in life if you will first help others get what they want. And you should check out his best-selling book. His, he's a best-selling author of Built to Lead, um, Seven Management Rewards Principles for Becoming a Top 10% Manager. And that's he'll, he'll talk about the acronym rewards and what that stands for. And, and plus, he takes, some years he takes off 26 weeks a year off. And 24. because, he, 20, 24, whatever. 24. <laughs> I don't care if it's 20, it's impressive. If it's 10, it's okay. impressive. Um, because he has a rock star team in place. Um, right. So David, thank you for joining me. Happy to have the opportunity, Appreciate buddy. It. The last thing I wanted to talk about is rewards. Okay. Um, what it stands for from built to lead just to segue <laughs> long, long into question. the book. Um, and you could just, just hit the highlights. Yeah, I'll you can hit the summarize exactly. because people yeah. can get the book and they can check out you know, this interview and, and other things. But I would encourage people to check out Built to Lead um, and top10manager.com where they have more information about the book because yeah. David says, and, and most business people say the number one thing business owners need to do is have great people and train great people and it's your people that yep. serve the customers and yep. and help the company grow and, and thrive exactly so, exactly um so rewards 
the acronym. An acronym. Yep. Within the title. Right. Subtitle. Uh, rewards. Uh, the first R is for recon, as they say in the military. And that goes along with Jim Collins, good to great. You know, get the right people in the bus. And I'll summarize it with this. Uh, that's critical. You know, you start with the managers. I don't remember if Jim actually said this or not, but uh, we start with the managers. If you've got four managers, I want you to think of them as the tires on a car. You're driving down the road, everything's okay. All of a sudden, one of the tires blows out. Or in other words, one of your managers drops the wall or decides they want to leave or whatever. So what happens when you have to change a tire? All four managers have to pull over to the side of the road and there's no further progress until you fix that problem. So first of all, before you worry about all your people, you worry about your leaders and you got to make sure they're all in, that they're committed to where you're wanting to go. If you were to take over a business or you buy a business or start a business, whatever it is, as you grow and you develop your leaders, you got to make sure you're all on the same page. So if all four tires or managers are aligned, then you've got a great, and you can tool it on down the road. You've got a great team. So once you have the people, the right people in the seats on the manager position, then you sit down with each manager and you assess every team member that they have. And you say, what about, uh, what about Tom? Ah, he comes in late all the time and everything. Can you salvage Tom? Yeah, I think so. You know, let me talk to him and tell him, hey, we're not going to tolerate that anymore. All right. Let's go ahead and give him another shot. Tell him we're giving him another shot and then we'll go from there. So then you check back, you know, a month later, how's it going with Tom? That kind of thing. So you help your people develop their people and hold them accountable. You know, they, they, someone once said the greatest ability is dependability, but I would say that accountability mm -hmm. is right up there because you cannot, if you cannot depend on your team, you're not going anywhere as a business owner or a leader. So the second one is education which we talked about book club. Yes. Uh, but, and we talked a little bit about masterminds, but those are the two things I talk about and the importance of both in the mm -hmm. education chapter of my mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. The next one is winners emerge. Uh, and that is basically looking at the people that you have thus far and that you are developing and learning and seeing what people can do in book club. That's where the winners emerge uh, comes that's where it is. You're, you're, you're finding your best people. They're blossoming. They're, they're standing forth above the shoulders of the other people. So those are the winners that we're talking about emerging out of the two prior points and principles. So you develop on those people and you continue to do so. The next rewards is A, which is for attitude. Doesn't matter. We, you and I both got this from Zig Ziglar, Jeremy. You know, attitude is critical. You know, if a person has a bad attitude, I don't care if they're the best salesperson in the company. Yeah. They're going to be gone. I have had to fire my top two salespeople. Actually, I should say my top salesperson twice down through the years. And both times for the same reason. Both of those individuals had come in where they weren't making all that much money. And all of a sudden, they're making 150, 200,000, which is like three, four times more than the average person in North Carolina. And then all of a sudden they start thinking there's that stink anymore mm. and they're going to, you know, a crude say, way to say it, but it's basically the way it is. And then they start mm. treating the other people like they're their slaves. I don't right. tolerate that. I'm going, these other people are the ones that make you look good. They're the ones who deliver on everything you sell. Right. So I've, I tell them, by the way, uh, I tell them, I will warn you one time. I tell this to every, every new salesperson that comes in the company today. I say, I will warn you once. We want you to come in and be successful. I'd love it if you sell a million dollars and you make a hundred thousand your first year, which a lot of people do. I said, but if you ever treat my people like they're your slaves and you're less than you and they're less than you, you're out of here. I'll warn you one time. And I do. I just did this with the latest uh, sales training class. So that is attitude and how critical it is to the, you can't have a, you know, that song, I think it was Michael Jackson. You, you know, one bad apple spoils the whole bunch, right? Mm -hmm. It truly does. So you cannot allow that to stay. Right. And the next R in rewards is recognition. And the critical element that people forget is that people think they're there for a paycheck only, and that's wrong. Just do your job. I'm paying you. Just do what I pay you for. That's a terrible attitude. For like you said, it's the fifth reason why people yep, actually exactly. yeah, fifth, are motivated. Money's fifth. Recognition is number two. And that's from James, uh, George Mason University. That was 1,800 uh, managers and 1,800 employees. And they surveyed them. And these are the things they came up with. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a webinar on that pretty soon. I've got all that, all that research. 
will they can they find the webinar on top ten managers dot com or where no they would they would uh they would need to um go to myemployees.com dot com uh-huh. and uh it's not there yet but it's going to be okay uh coming up pretty soon and uh you can you can put myemployees.com dot com forward slash webinar if you like All right and uh I will make sure that's an active uh, Got it. link by the time you're ready to air this. All right. And uh, we'll put it there just so that they can go there if you want. Awesome. Anyway. Um, so on the recognition on the R, second yeah, R. Recognition. So, yeah, when you get back to George Mason University, they found all that and how important recognition is. But here's the thing is that according to Gallup Research, which is the largest research company in the world, they found that 65% of employees when surveyed said they had not been man, not been recognized by their manager in the last year. Now wow. you're going to have managers going, no stink away. I recognize them all the time, but you and I have both heard and everybody that's listening has heard this old saying is that your perception is your reality. Yes. So if you perceive, you perceive that your manager hasn't recognized you then for all practical purposes, they have not. So, that is important. So, and another thing too, and you, this is like Zig Ziglar used to say, you want to be a meaningful, specific, not a wandering generality. Mm-hmm. That applies to recognition as well, and especially, mm-hmm. especially to recognition. If I came up to you, Jeremy, and I just came and I said, Jeremy, you're doing a great job. And I walked off, you're going like, what the freak was that? <laughs> you know, what's he, is he buttered me up for, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, but if I come up to you, Jeremy, and I say, Jeremy, I just want you to know that Tom told me that you stayed an hour late the other night to help him unload the truck when one of the other guys didn't show up. I just want you to know that I personally appreciate you helping and really stepping up to help the team. Hmm. Now, that means something. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Big difference. You see the difference between the two? Huge difference. Yeah. So that's very, very important. And recognition is in all aspects of life. Right now, we've got a new video that we're actually getting put together. And it's basically taking snippets of video of people all ages. Little Cub Scout wins the roll, the uh, what do you call it? The Derby, little trophy, you know, the the, car derby. Yep. Yeah, yeah. What do you call that? I I, yeah, it is. It's something I I compete in that. Box Derby. Yeah, that's it. So anyway, uh, you know, and you've got like Michael Jordan, you know, hugging the trophy when he won his first championship, kind of thing, Mm -hmm. and uh, with his dad standing, you know, things like that. You know, uh, the president putting a uh, medal around uh, the Medal of Honor winners, you know, everybody at every age and every nationality in every, you know, male, female, it doesn't matter. Everybody craves, they don't just want it. They crave recognition. Hmm. And if you give it to them and they will love you and trust you and you, they will be fiercely loyal to you. And then the next, the, fi- the uh, D in rewards is duplication. And this is why a book club, another reason is so important is that you're constantly training your people, but we take it a step further. Every one of my four leaders, the four different departments, they have to be able to tell me, who are you mentoring right now? I'm mentoring so-and-so. What are you doing to mentor so-and-so? Oh, I got them reading a book with me. Okay, great. See, they're reading a book with them, but both people are reading the book. My manager's reading the book, which is in addition to book club. And then Hmm. they're talking about that and they're developing that person. Now, my managers know that they have a secure relationship with me, that they're not afraid to develop someone else because the company is growing and we're going to need future leaders for new departments and new divisions. Yeah, they so don't feel threatened. They don't feel threatened. Exactly. So they have, and I, and I pressure them on that. What have you done lately? You know, what have you done with Tom? You haven't mentioned him lately. What are you doing? Well, we're doing this now, working on a course. Okay. If you're not doing something, you need to be doing something. I'm always making sure. And I, by the way, I do not put them in that position unless they agree to do so. So if you're not willing to do it, then I'll get somebody else for this position. I have never had anybody not take because of that reason. So we have constant, you know, like I said, when we, when my, my COO of 22 years decided he wanted to be CEO of another company, it took me less than 48 hours to replace him as well as our sales manager in 48 hours, the top two positions in the company were replaced. And I just told you last month, we had a record month in the company history, 1.939 million. We had missed a beat. Why? Because we constantly develop our people. 
It's like, I call it in my book, Jeremy, the leadership. I call it the shark's teeth leadership development program. Why? Because I'm from the ocean. I surfed most of my life, my younger days, especially. Hmm. So I've been out there in the old ocean with a lot of sharks. So if you see a shark's mouth, you see all these rows of teeth. Well, if they're in a fight with a, another shark or prey or something and a tooth pops out, another one pops right up in its place. Hmm. That's why you develop the people beneath you and the people beneath them so that you have constantly developing the leadership of the future for your company. So you can eat your competition. Yep. So no. that's your duplication. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You can eat your competition. That's right. <laughs> that's good. And the final one, my friend in rewards is the S and the S stands for success. And success, when you look at most people and you ask them what success is, they seem to always put it in dollars in, the, you know, in, in a means of, of how much money that is. But I, I want to I wanna throw ice water all over that um, because, you know, and I'm going to say it this way, is that, I, and I, I didn't have this in my book, but I'm just going to tell you. I had one time, one of my friends who is a good, dear friend of mine, and I remember after I got to be pretty successful and everything, he was in a situation where his house was going into foreclosure. And I remember him calling me and say, David, I need you to buy my house and rent it to me. I need you to buy it out of foreclosure and rent it to me. I said, well, how much? That's a big ask. Yes, it is. And uh, I said, how much do you owe? I'll help you get up on payments. And he says, too late. It's already gone to foreclosure. I said, well, why are you calling me? So I want you to, you know, I talked to the guy for $16,000. He'll let you buy it for what he just paid for it. And I'm going, uh, no, I'm not doing that. So I said, you know, I'm not going to be your, your landlord. You couldn't afford to pay it before. You're not going to be able to afford to pay it now. I'm not going to lose a good friend over it. I said, you're the good friend of mine for 20 some years. I said, but your wife, she's the one from what I understand, she pays the bills. And she's going to, if she's got the two bills to pay, she's going to pay something else before she pays David Long. And I yeah. said, I'm not putting myself in that position to lose a friend and my money. So I'm not going to do that. We're still friends, but you know, it was a painful conversation. But when I say, when you get a certain amount of money, the problems are bigger, mm -hmm. much bigger, you know? And uh, so let me, let me finish with, with the story that's in the book about the guy who at the time won the largest lottery winnings in the history of the United States it was 300. If I recall, it was $316 million. Mm -hmm. And anyway, so, when he won that money, the guy was already successful. Jeremy he had a hundred employees. Hmm. Very successful. He's a millionaire. He was a millionaire already when he won that money. And anyway, over the space of several years, he proceeded to you know run out on his wife and went and hang out at strip bars and all that kind of stuff. And the apple of his eye was his granddaughter. He had he had one one daughter and and she had a daughter. And so his granddaughter he had a great relationship with her. He loved her. He bought her a couple of cars and stuff like that. So. After he won the millions, um, he told her, you don't need to work anymore. She was working at Taco Bell, if I recall. And uh, he told her, you don't need to work anymore. So I'm just going to give you money. So he gave her money. It was a crazy amount of money every week. It was like 1500 bucks, you know, 2000 or something like that. And I remember she ended up, because she didn't have direction in her own life, she didn't have a job anymore, and she was out of school. So she started hanging around with the wrong crowd, started doing drugs. Make a long story short, Jeremy. And you read it, I think you said. So, and, and it, was on a, it was on ABC's 2020. I mean, look it up on YouTube or something and watch it. It's break your heart. But anyway, so he basically um, one day found out the police called or whatever, and his granddaughter had OD'd. Mm. She was in her car. And when they got there, you know, she, there were $100 bills or whatever wadded up in the floor. And, you know, money was there and the drugs and everything. And she OD'd. She died. And, you know, the, this, this millionaire before, you know, he won all the millions, his, his, his marriage fell apart. His daughter hated him. His, his granddaughter died. And I remember he had to hire people to, to, to take all the calls and solicitations for money that people wanted from him. Mm. And people sued him. Former employees sued him. His employees, current employees sued him. I mean, his life turned into a living hell. And uh, he basically, I remember when it was all said and done on the show, and I remember what they, what they said when they asked him about that. He goes, you know, the worst thing ever happened to me in my life was winning the lottery. Hmm. And it cost him everything he had. And uh, if you focus on money, you're going to be a hollow individual. You'll be the shell of a person. Hmm. 
It's what money can do. Money is a tool. It is not the goal. You know, you can do a lot of good things with money. You can buy drugs. You, well, you can do terrible things too. You can buy drugs with it or you can feed a homeless person. You know, you can, you can build a house for someone who doesn't have a house or you can turn it into a crack house, you know, whatever. I mean, it's money is a tool. It is not the driving force. At least it should be. And if it is the driving force, whatever you get, that boat, you will not be happy when you see a bigger one. You'll have to have the bigger one and the bigger one, the plane and a bigger plane and a bigger plane, a bigger house, a bigger house, a faster car, a nicer car. It never ends. You know, one thing I've learned as I've gotten older and I'll be 62 next month is I'm very, I'm very, I'm very happy. I have a nice house. I have a nice car, but I don't have everything that I could afford to buy. You know, one of my children actually bought a boat. And my, and my friends and everybody, why don't you have a boat? I said, oh, I don't want a boat. It's something else to take care of. You know, I, I, I have my wife and I have Harley Davidson's. We rode cross country, ocean, ocean, 05. I can do things like that. Doesn't take a lot of money to do that. But if I buy a boat, I'll probably want a bigger boat and a bigger boat. So I will pay to rent someone else's. I'll pay the gas and they get to do everything else. We'll go mm -hmm. out riding. It's fun. But I don't want anything else. I got to babysit. It starts to own you, right. not you owning it. And it takes over your life. I don't want that. And, you know, I would rather, I would rather, in my life today, I invest my money in experiences. You know, my wife and I take our two best friends, two couples, we take them on vacations with us. And my wife and I pay for everything. Uh, my best friends that I had when I had nothing are my best friends today. Mm -hmm. I have not changed my friends. I love the people that I have. And I talk to people like you. I get to admire people like you and know you and, and other people and like Titans and Top One and the other groups and things. But my friends or my intimate friends knew me when I had nothing. They loved Dave Long when he had nothing. And I, I try to spoil them every way I can without disincentivizing them to do their job. Mm. I'm not, not giving them enough, but I will help them do things like get a car if they need a car, stuff like that. I, you know, I, I love my friends and my family. I'm always there to help them, but I do not enable them like the rich guy that, that won the lottery who gave, um, you know, all that money to his granddaughter and cost him his whole marriage, his relationship with his daughter, his granddaughter and all that. I, I, yeah. I'm not doing that. And, uh, I even told my own children, which, you know, we, we started to, uh, I looked at selling my company because I, I just thought I would. Just see what I, it was worth. We had it value. We had four M&A firms. And one of them, the lowest number was $24 million, The other one was $28 million that we would have sold it for. I could have walked away with $10 million. But then I found out um, that it would devastate the lives of my people. Those, all four of those M&A firms. One of them, oh, pardon me, two of them were going to guarantee my COO two years. And the other one, the other two were going to guarantee him one year. Nobody else in the company had a job that they were guaranteed. Mm. And I came home to my wife and I said, honey, when I found that out, I said, uh, I said, baby, we take off 24 weeks of vacation minimum every year. I said, baby, our, our life's not going to change at all. I said, but we will devastate the lives of our people. So I could have walked away with bottom line, by the way, my CPA said, David, you'll, you'll come out of that with a minimum of $10 million after taxes and your kids will come out after taxes, a million and a half or something. And, uh, and I, I told my wife, I said, honey, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. I mm -hmm. said, we don't need the money. And I said, I, want, I, I spent all this time building my people and relationships and, and giving them the best life they've ever had in their cockeyed, you know, existence. And as I love being able to say that, I said, I'm not going to devastate them in the next move. So we will not sell the company. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. So success ultimately is not money. It is your life and what you become and the legacy you leave. Yeah. David, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Everyone should check out Built to Lead. Um, you can get it on Amazon. You can go to top10manager.com and also check out myemployees.com. I want to be the first one to thank you, David Long. It's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. I thank you, buddy. I will say this too. Let me, let me tell you this right fast. Yeah. First of all, I appreciate the privilege of being able to speak with you today. Um, I, I, it means a lot to me. I really admire you and I like you a whole lot. So I was more than, more than excited to be able to talk with you. Thank you. Uh, two things, the top 10 is top TOP and then the number one zero mm -hmm. top 10 manager. So it's not T E N it's one zero. Correct. And then, uh, if they go and buy my book, I don't even care if you buy it from a reseller. I didn't write the book. 
And even though it became a Wall Street Journal bestseller, I did not write the book to make money out of it. Uh, I wrote it to help people. So if you go there, I don't even care if you buy it from a reseller for half the price, then you buy it from me. You send me an email at davidlong at myemployees.com and you say, I bought your book, please you know, send me, and put your, your Amazon uh, invoice number in there that you paid to buy the book and send me an email and I will send you the Kindle version of my book and the workbook I wrote to help people maximize what they learn from the book. I'll mm. send it to you for free. Thank you. Just to help people. Thank you. Yeah, it's top one zero, top 10, yeah, one top zero manager.com. <laughs> exactly. So thank you, David. Really appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 